Welcome to this tutorial video for basic computer operation. The purpose of this video is to provide you with the skills you need to perform basic operations on a computer. Specifically, after watching this video, you'll be able to turn on a computer, use a mouse, navigate the desktop, and shut down a computer. A couple of challenges exist when learning how to operate a computer. First, they can be very intimidating. What with all the parts and wires and buttons, who knows where to begin? Second, computers operate similarly, but they all have their own unique functionality. So the way you perform a task may differ from computer to computer. Hopefully, by watching this video, you'll gain two things. First, you'll feel a bit more confident about performing basic tasks on a computer. Additionally, You'll be able to take the basic knowledge that you gain here and apply it to your computer. Note that for our purposes in this video, I will be using a laptop with a Windows 10 operating system. Therefore, what you see in this video may not look exactly the same as your computer at home. First, let's talk about turning on a computer. In most cases, you will need to turn on multiple components of the computer to turn the whole system on. For example, you may need to turn on the tower and the monitor. In the case of a laptop, you would simply need to turn on the laptop as it's only one component. Most computer components have power buttons that look very similar. Some examples of power buttons are shown on your screen now. To turn on any component of a computer, you just simply need to press that power button. Now let's move on to how to use a mouse. The mouse is a handheld device that allows you to control the movement of the cursor or the pointer on the monitor. The mouse has a left button, a right button, and some have a scroll wheel located in between those two buttons. To hold the mouse, place your hand on top of it with the back end of the mouse in your palm. Your thumb should go along the side of it, and your index finger goes on the left button, and your middle finger goes on the right button. Your ring finger and pinky finger should curl around the side opposite of your thumb. Holding the mouse in this way allows you to better control the mouse as you move it around. And note that when you click on things, the mouse needs to be held relatively still in order for the clicking to work. Speaking of clicking, let's cover how to use the mouse buttons. Pressing the buttons on the mouse is called clicking due to the noise that the buttons make. Pressing the left button on the mouse once is called a click. Most people use their index finger to click. Pressing the left button twice in a row in rapid succession is called a double click. Double clicks have a particular cadence to them. So when you start using your mouse to double click on things, it might take a little practice to get the double clicking right. So stick with it, it will get easier. Generally speaking, left clicks and double clicks either select or open items on a computer. Pressing the right button is called a right click. Most people use their middle finger to right click the right button. Generally speaking, right clicks open additional menus that allow you to choose actions or options for the item that you just clicked on. And if your mouse has a scroll wheel, you can spin the wheel away from you or spin the wheel toward you and it will move the page on your monitor up and down very quickly. Most people use their index finger to scroll. Now, let's move on to navigating the desktop. When your computer has finished booting up when you turn it on, 
The first screen that's displayed is called the desktop. Typically, the desktop screen houses the taskbar, the start menu, and various icons for files and software programs. Every computer's desktop will look different. So let's take a tour of some of the typical things that you'll see on a computer's desktop. Most desktops contain icons for files and software programs that are loaded onto your computer. An icon is a small graphical representation of a program or file. These icons allow you to access software programs or files that are stored on your computer. When you double click on any of these icons, the associated file or program will open. Another way to access various software programs on your computer is through the taskbar. Typically, the taskbar is found at the bottom of the desktop screen and allows quick access to current or favorite software programs. In Windows 10, the taskbar contains the start menu, a search feature, icons for favorite programs, and the action center. So let's look at this taskbar in a little bit more detail. The Start button is located in the lower left corner of the desktop screen. In Windows 10, it is a white, four-paned window. Clicking on the Start button reveals a menu that allows you to access everything on your computer. This is an example of a Start menu. The Start menu has three columns. The column on the left contains commonly accessed functions. Typically, File Explorer, which looks like a little file folder, the Settings, which looks like a gear, and the Power button, which looks like the power buttons we reviewed earlier. If you point your mouse at any of these functions on the left, a small pop-up window will appear telling you the name of these functions, and clicking on any of them will open them. For example, if you click on File Explorer, it will open a two-sided window that functions as your computer's directory. From here, you can access any files you have saved to your computer. Clicking on the Settings button will open a window allowing you to access all of the settings for your computer. And clicking on the Power button will open an additional menu that allows you to restart your computer, put it to sleep, or shut it down. The column in the middle of the Start menu contains an alphabetical list of every software program or tool that is loaded onto the computer, and clicking on any of these will open the program. This list is vertically scrollable, so you may need to scroll down to find the program or tool you're looking for. The column on the right contains tiles, which serve as additional icons for various software programs. Clicking on any of those tiles will open the program. Note that like most things on a computer, the Start menu is customizable, so your Start menu on your computer at home may look a little different than what you've seen here in this video. To the right of the Start menu button is the search feature. In Windows 10, the taskbar has a search feature, also called Cortana. Cortana is the Windows 10 virtual assistant that can search your computer for files or software programs using keywords that you enter. To the right of the search feature are the taskbar shortcuts. These shortcuts are typically located in the center of the taskbar. They are icons that when clicked, open a favorite or commonly used program. Every computer's taskbar will look different since it is customizable. Then on the far right, we have the Action Center. It functions as a place for all system notifications and quick access to various settings on your computer. Every computer's Action Center will look different because it is customizable as well. 
Now let's move on to our final topic of how to shut down a computer. When you're finished working, it is critically important that you shut down your computer properly. This is going to help that your computer will continue to operate as it should. To shut down a computer correctly, you'll begin by clicking on the start button located in the lower left corner of your desktop screen. When the menu appears, you're going to click on the power button in order to obtain additional menu. When the additional menu appears, you'll click shut down. Your computer will then begin its process of shutting down. Using a computer can be very intimidating to say the least, but hopefully by watching this video, you feel a little more at ease. Thank you very much for watching.